The crosstab query wizard will perform a summary calculation of intersecting values of row and column headings, which are chosen by you. To put it another way, I think you'll understand it once we actually go through the wizard. But before we do that, the crosstab query wizard can be based upon other queries or tables. For example, I have I have my quarter one sales query, and I want to be able to create a crosstab query wizard that will, let's say, we need to find out how each product in each category here did in the way of sales in each month of the first quarter. And in fact, as far as the date goes, if I right click and go to the design view, you notice down here it's got the date between January 1st, if I scroll over and click and drag, to March 31st. In other words, the first three months, the first quarter. That's good to know because that's going to be represented in our crosstab query to get the results that we want. And again, that's to find out how each product in each category did in the way of sales in each month of the first quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Come up here to begin my crosstab query wizard by clicking on the Create tab. Come over to the other group and click on the query wizard. And there it is right here, across tab, and it explains it a little bit more down below here. It says the wizard creates a cross tab query that displays data in a compact spreadsheet like format. It gives you a nice little preview. If you recall Excel 2007, you have your column headers and your row headers here. Click OK to get started. Now again, you can base this upon tables or queries, and the query that we wanted is going to be the quarter one sales. Click Next. And then it says, which field values do you want as row headings? You can select up to three, and they're going to be listed over here. So that means if I double click and add the category, that's going to be one row heading. And it says you want to select the fields in the order you want the information sorted. So I want it sorted first by category, and then by product. Click Next. And then which field values do you want as your column headings up here? Well, this is where the crosstab query wizard gets pretty cool, because if I double click on date, then I get the choice of the type of dates, either by quarter, month, or year. I'm going to go by month, so it breaks it down to January, February, March. And then it asks me, what number do you want to calculate for each column in each row intersection? So here's our row with column intersection for the month of January for our products. The last field that I have, or that I'm going to be calculating, is going to be sales. And I want to be able to add up the sales, so I will select the sum. And I want to add up the sales for each product that belongs to each category for the month of January. And click Next. And that's it. Gives me the default title name here of the crosstab query with the crosstab there. If I'm good with it, click Finish. And there we go. So we have the categories. Remember, that was sorted first. So A's down to T's. And then after it sorts there, then we've got it by product. So we have for all the sleeping bags, for at least the total sales here, for the quarter, and then we have it broken down by month within the quarter, January, February, March, where we had no sales for fanny packs in the accessories category in January. But for the accessories, we did good in lanterns for January. Now, you can get the exact same results in the query here that we just opened up except that it's breaking it out by month. So in other words, if I double click and open this up, I can configure this to get the results I want, except that it's by date, where if I close out of here, this actually makes it look nice and pretty because we have it broken out by month. Now, if you scroll over to the right, you've got extra months. And if I don't like those, then what I can do is go to the design view by right clicking and going down to the design view. And then in the light blue area up at the top, go ahead and right click and go down to properties. And then, of course, over to the right, you can see the months here, January, February, March. All you need to do is we don't want April or all the rest. It's just click and drag and, well, delete all of it. Keep hitting the delete key. Of course, you can always right-click and zoom in so we can see it all here. Let me get rid of December, hit the backspace, backspace, click OK. So all I have now is January through March. Click on the Run button. There we go. Looks nicer, doesn't it? Or at least cleaner. And then one last thing to tidy up, let's click on the column header, Total Sales, and then click again and drag that to the right so we can see January, February, March, and then the total for those three months. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.